risk management application of forward and future strategies so again uh, we will invest 10 to 15 minutes in revising certain basics of forwards and futures and then we'll hit the topic directly so the first concept that i would like to revise with you is the concept of beta so i'm writing certain values here let us say percentage return on s p 500 and percentage return on a particular stock let us say starbucks so let's say these values are like this 10 percent 15 percent 12 17 percent 14 20 percent minus 6 i'm just making them up minus 6 minus 18 percent so with this data what i want you to calculate first calculate a covariance between s p 500 and starbucks sbux and also find out what would be the variance of s p 500 use population data so while calculating covariance use population data while calculating variance use population yes how much is covariance you can ignore the percentage just enter, enter them as uh, absolute values 120 covariance uh, answer that i have received is 120 and variance of snp use population values 62.4 same no what are your values yeah 121.75 and variance 62.5 so it's almost same okay. in case if you've forgotten you you don't have to do this manually you can use the data function and stat function of the calculator data function is second seven so enter s p 500 values as x values enter starbucks values as y values so x01 would be 10 y01 would be 15 so on and so forth then say second and eight and go inside the stat function once you're inside the stat function then first find out what is the correlation coefficient which is r then find out what is the sigma x then find out what is the sigma y multiply the three values and then you will have covariance so correlation into standard deviation one into standard deviation two is your covariance how much is that okay 121.75 and variance of x is nothing but square of the standard deviation is it 62.4 62.75 then how do we calculate beta of a stock we say covariance divided by variance of x-axis values so in this case 121.75 divided by 62.75 how much is that 1.94 so 1.94 is the beta of starbucks stock alternatively in your stat function look for b in your stat function in second eight look for b is it same so that's how we calculate beta of a particular stock and if you want to understand this graphically the way we do this on x-axis we will put tell me percentage return on s p 500 on y-axis we will put percentage return on sbux now what you actually do in real life we put excess return so we keep rfr as intercept and then we calculate excess return of s p 500 and starbucks but this also gives you a good approximation then those points will come on a line like this you draw a straight line out of these points and the slope of this point is your beta and it essentially shows you what is the volatility in starbucks which is explained by the volatility of s p 500 or market are we good with this do you remember the name of this line beta. yeah the slope is beta what is the name of the line security 
characteristic line security market line the slope is erp not beta beta is x axis value this is the slope security characteristic line should we go ahead but for this reading in fact the whole of reading is focused on betas and your understanding of beta is very important and what you understand out of beta it shows the is shows the level of systematic risk that means volatility of a particular stock vis a vis volatility of the market are we good here now little bit on forwards and futures so at both at level 1 and level 2 we looked at cash and carry arbitrage and reverse cash and carry arbitrage and then using these two arbitrage we were able to prove that a no arbitrage forward price should be equal to spot into 1 plus rfr raised to n on a continuous compounded basis the equation would be spot to e raised to rt if we have a dividend yield then it would be spot into e raised to r minus the dividend yield adjusted for t and if you have a discrete dividend then you have to reduce the present value of the dividend from spot price let's do a couple of them let us say spot price is 2250 rfr 12% continuously compounded dividend yield is of 4% continuously compounded the expiry or maturity maturity is 147 days find out no arbitrage forward price no arbitrage forward price so now your answer would be 2250 into e raised to 12% minus 4% into 147 divided by 365 and that's coming out to be 2323 one more spot 1600 expected dividend in 90 days 125 expected dividend in 180 days 140 expiry is 270 days assume 360 days a year risk free rate of return 10% per annum assume discrete compounded annually discrete rate compounded annually find out no arbitrage future price or forward price what is the answer 1446 1481 1443 all right so how do you do this question there are two ways of doing it you can say spot minus present value of dividend into 1 plus rfr rest to n or spot into 1 plus rfr rest to n minus future value of dividend both the ways will get you precisely the same answer so you take present value of 125 for 90 days present value of 140 for 180 days reduce those present value from 1600 and the reduced amount take future value for 270 days that's your no arbitrage future price whatever the value comes out to be are we good with this now just so 141 Four three. Now let us say after after thirty days, spot price is one seven one five. Can you find out what is the value of this particular forward contract after thirty days? Same contract, 
After 30 days, the spot price has become 1715. What is the value of forward contract? So the way you do this is 1600 into 1.1 raised to 1 by 12. How much is this? 16, 16 or 14. 1. How much is this value? 1612. And then your answer is 103. This was, this was a shortcut of doing it. Or you might as well find out a new forward price, take the difference and discount the difference backwards. What you need specifically to answer the learning outcomes of this reading. There is just one formula in this trading and there are about six or seven learning outcomes and all of those learning outcomes are revolving around the single formula. So before throwing the formula, I'm going to do an example and then we will derive that formula. So imagine you have a cash equity portfolio. That means you have an equity portfolio of 100,000. The beta of your portfolio is one. I'm just keeping it simple to begin with. So beta is one. Now what has happened is your outlook, your outlook on market is negative. That means you're of the opinion that maybe the markets will go negative. You have a long position on these right now. You would want to reduce your exposure or reduce the beta of your portfolio to zero. That means you want to nullify your exposure to market. So you decide to take help of the future contract. Now one way of nullifying the exposure is that you simply sell your position. But if you sell your position and after three months or after two months, you change your outlook, you'll have to buy it again. So you'll have to pay transaction cost twice. An alternate way of doing it is you can make use of a future contract. So we have future contracts available. This future contract has a price of 25,000. Assuming lot size is only one, the price of future right now is 25,000. And the beta of this future contract is two. So what you decide is you decide that you will take, you will take short position you will take short position on two future contracts. You will take short position on two future contracts. How did I decide to? That's what we have to learn in this reading. So I'm indirectly deriving the formula of deciding this too. But you decided to take short position on two future contract. Once you do that, then see what happens. Let us assume that you were right and markets fell down by 10%. If markets fell down by 10%, then this 100,000 stock, now it will become how much? It will become 90,000. So how much is your loss here? Your loss is of 10,000. Now because the beta of futures is 2, the volatility would be of how many percent? Here volatility is 10%, so price volatility in future price would be of 20%. So how much will this price be now? How much will this price be? 20,000. It will fall by 20%. So this price now would be 20,000. So how much is your profit per contract? 5,000. So your total profit is how much? 5,000 into 2, 10,000. And then your loss here and profit here, your net exposure to market is zero. Have you followed this? And to find out this two, they have proposed a formula. The formula is like this. The formula is beta of your equity portfolio into the value of equity portfolio divided by what is the beta of futures contract. So I'm writing this as beta of beta of futures contract into what is the price of futures contract right so if i put things into this formula 
then this would be 1 into 100,000 <coughs> divided by this would be 2 into 25,000 that will give us answer of 2 and therefore we decided that we should take we should take position on two future contract on the opposite side have you understood this hmm? please write down the example yes if you are long on equity and if you want to reduce the beta you will go short on futures but if you want to increase the beta then you would again go long on futures so you can work both ways now there could be a variant <coughs> variant in this question clearing of the other data so again we are in the base case scenario but this time the beta of your portfolio let us say is 5 current beta of the portfolio is 5 your outlook on the market is negative you want to reduce the beta of your portfolio to 2 reduce to 2 okay, so you want to current beta is 5 you want to make beta of your portfolio as 2 now see what happens in this case in this case you decide to take short futures 6 contracts Now let us say that markets actually fall by 10%. If markets fall by 10%, then your equity position will fall by how much? 50%. So value of your position is 50,000. That means your loss is of 50,000. But if markets fall by 10%, then futures will fall by how much? Futures will fall by 20%. So the value of futures now is 20,000. So that means your profit per profit per future is how much? 5,000. So 5,000 into 6 contract, your total profit is how much? 30. So what is your net loss? Net loss is 20,000. And if you'd see, you've been able to reduce the portfolio beta to 2. Right? Because now when markets fell by 10%, the value of your portfolio has come down by 20%. Right? So using this mechanism, you can also achieve a target beta. So what is the formula for this target beta? So here you would say, beta target minus beta of equity portfolio into value of equity portfolio divided by beta of futures into price of futures assuming there is no multiplier right now single lot size so if i put that formula here your target beta was 2 then your current equity beta was 5 into value of equity 100,000 divided by beta of futures was given as 2 into price of the future was 25 so which gave us 6 minus 6 6 contracts have you understood this so write down 